Welcome back to the News at 10. In the spirit of Eid al-Kabir celebration, some families defied bad weather conditions in Abuja to visit recreation spots in the nation's capital amidst complaints about the lack of money to celebrate the festive season. A visit to some of the leisure parks in Abuja revealed a fair turnout of people who were catching their fun. Now, however, some fun lovers who were public servants frowned on the non-payment of their salaries before the holiday was declared. Notwithstanding the inclement weather, the Millennium Park in Abuja is full of activities as fun lovers and family members flock in for recreation. The public holiday declared by the federal government no doubt affords parents the opportunity to spend quality time with their children. We give thanks to Allah for the blessing of life. So we are at work, we used to be at work, we are given a holiday to come and so we were trying to like have fun with our family, that's why we come to park. Thank God for this Allah. I carry my family from Sabon we say they can celebrate. For this one, we scatter everything. While some fun lovers are disappointed by the disruption caused by the rain, others defy the inclement weather to catch their fun. But beyond catching this fun, some parents who are civil servants wish salaries were paid before the public holiday. We are enjoying it, but financially, it's not uh, that easy uh, because uh, I think salary was not paid before the salary, but we are managing. Abuja, Nigeria's capital city, has beautiful mountainous landscape and gardens for relaxation during holidays. However, like several other cities across the country, the huge tourism potentials of the city remain underdeveloped, even though successive administrations agree that tourism could be a major source of income. It is hoped that when fully developed, perhaps in the near future, fun lovers and all the tourists would have a variety of fun spots to choose from. While the first day of the Salah celebration saw Muslim faithful showing appreciation to God at various Eid prayer grounds before the customary killing of rams, many parents took time to unwind and have fun with their children. Our correspondent Tosni Adishino caught up with some parents and fun lovers at some spots in Lagos. Parents and children are taking advantage of the holidays to relax and also have a special time together. The Ndubuisi Park in Lagos State is filled with rides, games and other fun activities for children. I came to Afo. Are you going to go on all the rides before you go? Yes. How many rides have you been on? Plenty rides. I'm celebrating um, the Salah. Like... It's just like um, come to this place and enjoy your life. Like. Yes, enough fun. We've been moving around. We've been, you know, we came from a, a Domino's Pizza to this place just for her to have fun. My daddy brought us here to play and enjoy ourselves. We've been having fun, playing around, enjoying the Salah celebration. While kids enjoy themselves on the slides and swings, parents treat themselves to nice outdoor games. Others seize the moment to catch up on the latest happenings in town. Amidst the excitement, the importance of the holiday is not lost. It's really important because of it tells me more about what happened before me and the way things happened and others. That I should just be grateful for everything I have, that those who don't have to. It's the final day of the Eid al-Kabir holiday as work resumes on Thursday. Yet, many of these fun lovers seem to have made the most of the two days break from work. Tosin Additional, Channels Television News. And the Eid al-Kabir celebrations have rounded off with residents of Karishi suburb of the Federal Capital Territory taking out time to celebrate one another despite the cultural diversity in the community. The Emir of Karachi, who thanked the government for the development in the area, says this year's celebration is peaceful. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, reports. 
Karshi is a satellite town 30 minutes away from the Abuja city center. Residents here are mostly of the Bagi extraction. However, there are people from other ethnic groups in the town. Leaders of different ethnic groups here say they have lived in the community for decades without incident and particularly look forward to the Idil Kabir celebrations every year. I've been here since 1981. Thank God um, that by the grace of God, Karishi is as it is today. That time no one believed that there would be progress and development here in Karishi as of now. It's a really entertaining spectacle. And you know, it's the big, bigger sala. Uh, in Hausa, they say Boba Sala. And uh, anything big brings out big things. So joyfulness everywhere, celebrations. Both the Christians and Muslims, both the indigenous and non-indigenous, we are celebrating alike. In Kabul this year is lovely and it's, it's great. The relationship with indigenous is cordial. It's no problem. Very, cordial. We're very, very cordial. <laughs> This year's celebration coincides with the conferment of a chieftaincy title on one of the kingmakers. The district head and Galadiman Karshi speak to us on the significance of this year's celebration of Idil Kabir. People come from villages. We have uh, village heads that are here today. We have uh, 16 villages here and they are all here to celebrate the Salah with us to salute the Emir. Idil Kabir is the feast of the sacrifice. It honors the willingness of Prophet Ibrahim to sacrifice his son as an act of obedience to God's command. But before Prophet Ibrahim could sacrifice his son, God provided a lamb to sacrifice instead. In commemoration of this, an animal is sacrificed and divided into three parts. One third of the share is given to the poor and needy. Another third is given to relatives, friends and neighbors, and the remaining third is retained by the family. It also serves as a moment of reflection for the Muslim faithful across the world. Kayla Magua, Channels Television News. Makers of a local textile, popularly known as Adira in Ogun State, have appealed to the federal government to summon the necessary political will to revive the moribund industry. They blame the high cost of imported materials used in the production of the highly popular fabric. On our community report tonight, we look at how the local production of Adire has provided employment across the southwestern states and other parts of Nigeria. Adire, a local fabric of the Egbaz of Abeokuta, is the delight of many, attracting the patronage in Nigeria and beyond. The art has been in existence for over a century, passed from generation to generation. Young and old participate in the intricate and sometimes complex processes of production. visit to one of the settlements in the state capital where this local trade is prominently rooted reveals a beehive of activity. From printing, designing, dyeing and tailoring to packaging and beating. Although an ancient trade, it has been embraced by the younger generations who are making a living from the production of this local fabric. We have uh, those that are doing batik, eleko, machine design, pretty design, and those people are knocking it, those people are applied design, and those people that are dying it, and we have those people that are selling it, and we have those people that are selling raw materials for us. It's a uh, division of labor. We have a lot of, and in each aspect, have a minimum of, let's say, 500 people. To start with, I'm an accounting graduate from Olavi Sonobanjo University, and Adjo has been a good source of income. I once worked and what I earn here in a month I think is what what some people earn, more than what some people earn in a month. So it's okay. It's I'm being able to feed my family and be myself. The trade, according to the state government, has placed Ogun State on the world map. 
Many people, when they come in, especially the foreigners from America, from England, they want Algerian materials from Brazilians. In, and his essence is now looking for a unique way to make it a tourism thing that when the tourists come, if you go to Oduma, you will have the, I mean, even if you go to OPL there, go back to your library too, they have this mall where they sell this Algerian material. So people are now, they, they, the innovation is there. People are actually clearly aware of Algerian material. And it's something that, so I, I mean, it's, it's a trade that started over 100 years. It's a unique trade, it's commerce. That is the trade of our, for our mothers. Yeah. But vibrant as this trade is, the high cost has been the most challenging aspect of the trade for the practitioners who have to rely on very expensive imported materials. Most companies are not working very well because we have the type of material we used to do our own cloth, 100% cotton, like guinea, like any other fabric that is 100% cotton. That will come out fine in our product. For anyone that is not have 100% cotton, it's not coming out well. We are appealing to government to make sure all the uh, for a factory are doing 100% cotton that we will be able to go there and buy it used for our product. In order to further promote Adire making to international standards, the state government is currently constructing an ultra modern mall in Abokuta, dedicated to its production in recognition of its popularity. Let's take a look at business news now. Here's Anne Wilder. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Ijoma, and welcome to Business News. We begin with latest report coming from Reuters. It shows that Nigeria's crude differentials rose today with sales on the international market. But traders are saying that several unsold Nigerian cargoes have been cleared by buyers, with about half a dozen available for the August program and about 15 for the September program. But the four cargoes and Kwa Ibo crude received more bids, with the Kwa Ibo's last offered at more than $1.50 a barrel, and Focados offered a $1.35 a barrel, but there are concerns that the market is still oversupplied with the October loading program likely to reverse the current trend. And let's talk about Nigeria's capital importation, $5.5 billion. That's the amount that's been recovered for the second quarter of this year. The latest figure coming from the National Bureau of Statistics represents a 12.5% fall. That's when you compare it to the fourth quarter. The fall has been attributed to the contraction in portfolio and other investments, but on the other hand, foreign direct investment contributed 4.7% with the United Kingdom and the overall biggest importer by origin. The governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai, says despite constraints of plans of lean finances and setback in securing the $350 million World Bank loan facility, his administration has continued to complete all ongoing projects across the state. Governor El Rufai says the state government will use all legal means to ensure the loan facilities approved by the Senate in the interest of his state. We have arranged uh, domestic bank financing, uh, which uh, we are paying back through our internal generator revenue. And uh, this is how we've been able to get some of the projects going, albeit at a slower pace. But we'll, in, we'll continue to uh, you know, expand on that. Uh, but we're also pursuing the possibility of getting the loan represented to the Senate and get it approved. It's still a holiday for us here, but major global stock markets have closed today with slightly mixed performance as investors weigh renewed political developments around in the U.S. Let's see the closing figures for today. That's business news for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Gemma. You first. First bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, Super Eagles head coach Giano Ra promises to release his squad for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying game against Seychelles on Friday. And that's on sports. Just stay with us.